Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Thanks so much for being here. Hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are. As you can see, I have three uh, bowls of instant ramen noodles in front of me. And these are not just regular instant noodles. I gotta tell you, these are quite special. But before we get into that, I wanna say thank you to Chicken Fruit Apparel for sending me this amazing ramen t-shirt. This is from their new collection. Oh, by the way, I do have to say that this uh, Chicken Fruit Apparel, they do uh, these uh, food themed t-shirts, which I love because, you know, I love food. Uh, we have their macaron t-shirt as well as the taiyaki t-shirt. I think some of you already purchased some t-shirts from them, but uh, they have decided to give you guys 20% discount of your own shirt by clicking on the link below this video and using the code Tabi Eats. T-A-B-I-E-A-T-S. Make sure you use that code so you get your discount. Um, this is one of my, my favorite shirts that they've created. This is from their new line. And um, there's a small little uh, um, ramen logo on the front, but on the back, there's a bigger one. And it's really, really detailed. I love the design. Um, they, they include the chicken from their chicken fruit logo inside the ramen. It's like it's taking a bath in a bowl of ramen but um this is the perfect shirt to go along with my review of these instant noodles so um i got these from my local lawson store in japan uh if you didn't know already lawson is part of the three big chains of uh convenience stores here in japan that's including 7-eleven and family mart this one is lawson and i I don't really go to Lawson's so often. For some reason, I find myself going to 7-Eleven Family Mart a lot more just because um, they are closer. And actually, I ha we have uh, two 7-Elevens in walking distance and we have uh, three Family Marts within walking distance from this apartment. So, um, and, and we have one Lawson. So um, that's the reason why. But anyway, I didn't know that they had these um, interesting uh, uh, ramen noodles. I'm not sure if this is uh, from um, Lawson or you could buy this from anywhere. I'm really not sure, but I haven't seen these at uh, supermarkets, for example. So I think the safest bet would be to go to Lawson if you live here in Japan to try these out. Uh, the first one I have is uh, from Sugakia. And Sugakia, I've never been to Sugakia because... I don't think we have a Sugakia ramen shop here in Tokyo. I believe they are only in certain parts of Japan. Uh, Sugakia, I believe, is from Nagoya. Um, I googled it a little bit earlier and it says, yeah, they opened in 1946, their first shop in the heart of Nagoya. So um, if you live in that part of the, the, the um, country, you probably know, you're, you're probably very familiar with this one, but I'm not. So this is the shield ramen or salt ramen. So I'm really looking forward to trying that one out. Then we also got two more. This particular one is called Gendyu from Sendai and Morioka. Um, so uh, yeah, I've never seen this shop in Tokyo either. Maybe I, I just don't know about it, but um, this one looks good. This is a uh, noko miso ramen, which means a uh, uh, thick miso ramen. And then, um, last but not least, we have this one. This is a collaboration between Nakamuraya, which is famous for their Indian curry, and um, Meiya Musashi, which is another famous uh, ramen chain here in Japan. Um, Meiya Musashi, I believe, uh, is um, one of the first places to use um, a combination of meat and fish in their soup stock. And they became quite famous for that. And Nakamura is famous for the Indian curry. And as I googled it, um, easiest way to find information, uh, they uh, started making their curry. They started serving their curry in 1927 in Shinjuku. Isn't that interesting? I find that quite interesting. So, really looking forward to trying all of these out. Okay. Okay. So, I'm thinking I'm going to start off with uh, the shio ramen, the salt one, because. I think it's gonna be the most subtle flavored one. So let's give this one a try. This is called Josui Shio Ramen from Nagoya. Okay. And I, we have some kayaku in here. Kayaku simply means um, the ingredients um, that goes into the ramen, like green onions, 
on this one I see some I see a piece of char siu which is roast pork and also some dehydrated uh, memma which is like a bamboo shoots I'm gonna put my kayaku on the top so I'll plop that in right there and then I, I think the soup goes in last so I'm gonna fill up my uh, ramen with some hot water to the line I actually like to put it a little bit below the line I feel like putting it all the way to the line makes it a little bit watery for my taste okay and this is to cook for four minutes but I'm gonna cook it only for three I'm gonna put plop this uh, soup base right on top so that's three minutes all right and now all we have to do is wait and we can have a quick little chat but first I need a glass of water a sip of water I don't know why I'm extremely thirsty right now. Mm. I love water, by the way. <laughs> Some people don't like water. Some people find water very boring, but I like water. I don't know why. Water tastes really good to me. Of course, it has to be clean water, obviously. Um, but other than water, I, I like to drink um, green tea. And um, I like to drink, um, I, well, I like to drink teas of all kinds. And um, I like to drink decaf sometimes, uh, but never regular coffee because uh, regular coffee for some reason uh, gives me heart palpitations, but you guys already knew that. Um, I, I don't know why. I don't know why um, uh, tea doesn't have the same effect on me. Um, so I'm pretty sure it's not the caffeine. Uh, some people say it's the way uh, the uh, how slowly the caffeine gets absorbed into your body when it comes to tea or it's a different kind of chemical thing in the coffee. I have no idea why coffee does that to me. I love the smell of coffee. I love the, the taste of coffee. I really do. I used to be a coffee drinker, but um, I don't know. Coffee just doesn't bode well with me these days. It really, really doesn't. Yeah. Okay. So the reason why I put the soup on top of my uh, cup noodles when I'm cooking my noodles is that it actually warms up the soup. This particular soup packet is uh, a liquid on the inside. So it makes sense, doesn't it, right? To, to keep it on top of the, the um, hot ramen bowl. Yeah, that's nice and warm, getting nice and warm. Okay, so I think it's been about like two and a half minutes. And I know it says four minutes, but I think it's okay to check it right now. Yeah, I think it's all right. I think it's about right. Okay, I'm gonna take out the soup, take off the soup. I'm gonna peel this back. Mm. Mm. By the way, guys, you know, I do uh, at least one of these uh, food uh, themed videos uh, throughout the week. Um, do you guys enjoy them? I know many of you guys uh, like the walking around the city videos and I do that as well um, but um, you know I, I make two of them a week so uh, I thought maybe once I stay indoors um, but let me know let me know your opinions on what you think of these uh, food videos okay so check it out so that's my char siu there okay my noodles are ready yeah this is how I like my noodles I really don't like uh, soft noodles so um, yeah I usually you know eat my noodles before the allotted time that's the bamboo shoots right there that's my very thin slice of uh, char siu meat okay and then it's time to pour in my soup mmm really looking forward to this I haven't had ramen in a while wow okay that's nice and thick I like that I like that very much mix it up beautiful light color like shield army should be I do have to say it's a bit darker than the shield ramen I had in Hakodate uh, many years ago first things first we're gonna take a sip of the soup I hope you guys have something to eat <laughs> I know when you guys watch these videos you, you, you know I always make you hungry okay look at that Mmm. Mmm. That's actually pretty good. 
I actually wasn't um, expecting much from this one because um, Sugakia is, after all, a chain. But I know that it's a beloved chain in Nagoya. Oh, it's really, really nice. Um, it's not just like simple salt flavor, but there's depth to it, there's complexity. Definitely lots of umami. Mmm, I like it. All right, let's try the noodles. Oh. Takimas, the noodles are white. They look whiter than usual. I don't know. I, I guess noodles are white, huh? For some reason, I thought they were yellow. Hmm. 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 Typical uh, instant ramen noodles. One more bite. This is a very um. It's a flavor that I'm not used to. I, I'm not too familiar with shield ramen. Mm. Mm hmm. It's a very simple taste, um, but it's good. I like it. I, I I do. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> I have like um, almost no words to explain it except that it's um, simple but because of its simplicity, it's delicious. It, it's really good. It, it, it's the type of ramen that you can eat even when you don't have an appetite or when you want something lighter, like say compared to tonkotsu ramen, pork broth. Mm, the memma, the bamboo shoots are crunchy. Very nice. Mm, mm hmm. And the chashu, and it's round. Mm. Mm. Mm hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Kind of um reminds me of um luncheon meat a little bit. Yeah. But you know what? Overall, this is a pretty good bowl of ramen. Yeah. You know, I am thinking, guys. I mean, I mentioned the live stream before. Um, that I was thinking of going to Hakodate on a solo trip. I know I eat ramen kind of weird, you know, I have a lenge, this ramen spoon, and I have the habit of putting my noodles into the spoon, which most Japanese don't do, so I, I shouldn't do it. Mm. Mm. I'm thinking of taking a solo trip to Hakodate, and Hakodate is where Shio ramen was born. So um, they are supposed to have like the best Shio ramen. So kind of thinking of going to Hakodate and then after that uh, going down to Sapporo and then also visiting Otaru. Like so three different cities in Hokkaido and maybe one more city in Hokkaido. I'm not sure. Those three th cities I have been to but um, last time I was there I was in Otaru for just a short period of time and I was in Hakodate for just overnight, so I've always wanted to kind of go back. Hmm. All right. I love the soup. I really do. I'm gonna take one more bite of the noodles, and then I'll go to the next one. I don't think I'll be able to um, finish all three. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Delicious. The soup is probably my favorite part of the ramen. <clears throat> it's a soup. Oh shit. Alright, next one is uh, Genyu. Um, this is uh, uh, from a ramen shop uh, in Sendai. And um, this is miso ramen. Mm. And this one says that um, uh, the, they're using. Um, like like the fresh type of noodles, it's called namamen in Japanese, which means they're not the type of noodles that are deep fried. You know, um, the, the the noodles in cup noodles, for example, are fried um, before they're put into the cup. Whereas this one is not fried. Wow, look at this! These are bean sprouts. This is like it's not like dehydrated or anything. It's like boiled bean sprouts with some slivered carrots on the inside. Interesting, and this is their pack of kayaku, so that's probably like meat and green onions, and then 
Here's a liquid soup pack. And then here, this is another soup pack. Ato ire. So this one you put it at the end. Four different things in here. I especially love this like moyashi. Sugoi ne. Moyashi means bean sprouts. Another Japanese word for you today. Moyashi means bean sprouts. Repeat after me. Moyashi. Yay! Just this that. Okay. The noodles on this one is yellow for sure. Yeah. This is the type of noodles I'm, I'm more used to. I'm used to seeing them yellow. I'm gonna pour the kayaku on top. I'm not sure if this goes in last, but I'm gonna put it in now. I figure it's better if it's warmed up. Pour in the hot water. Just to just below the line, because that's the way I like it. Like right on there. And then I'm gonna close it up. Like so, and they're gonna add the, the liquid soup right on top. And this one, it says uh, you cook it for five minutes, so we'll do it for four minutes, shall we? Okay, this one's interesting because there's a pack of liquid soup and also a pack of dried soup. I wonder why they do it that way. Hmm, that's interesting. So that gives us like uh, three and a half minutes to have another chat. Let me just clean up this area. I don't like it when my table gets messy. I don't know if you guys watch my third channel. I have another channel, in, in, you know, in addition to the Tabi Eats channel, of course. It's called I Will Really Travel for Food. And, and I don't know if you notice, but when, when I eat, I like to eat on a clean table. I like everything properly set up. And, and I don't like it when there are like, um, like a messy table. I don't like when there's like things on the table, like spills and stuff. Kind of anal that way. I don't know how you guys are, but that's how I am. I also, um, I'm a very visual person. So uh, I, um, for me, when I eat, I eat with my eyes as well. So whenever I prepare a dish, I try to um, make sure there's, um, it's visually appealing. So uh, say there's a plate of food and I don't know, let's say there's um, a hamburger patty with gravy on top so it's brown and brown and maybe on the side there will be mashed potatoes with more gravy so it's all brown, right? So if I was to prepare that at home, I would probably need to add some color to it. So maybe I would add some broccoli on the side and even that's not enough. So I think I'd add maybe two or three little cherry tomatoes on the side. So it would be like green, a little bit red, and then of course the brown. Um, but that's how I've always been. And um, my mother doesn't seem to mind it uh, when she used to make me uh, uh, dinner or lunch. Um, I don't know. She, I think she started expecting me to... Um, uh, plate her dishes because uh, sometimes when she would plate something I would replate it and she didn't seem to be annoyed at that whatsoever I think she was more amused than annoyed you know that that this uh, 13 year old uh, boy is doing that but I, I, I found I found that uh, I, I think she found it fascinating <laughs> but that's my little quirk um, yeah I, I like I, I eat with my eyes. I'm a very visual person. And there, the soup is getting hot. Yes, it is. Yeah, but anyway, um, yeah, I wanted to go to Hakodate. That's one place I wanted to go to. Actually, Hokkaido. Um, Hakodate, Sapporo, and um, Otaru. And maybe one more city in Hokkaido. So that will be one trip I'm thinking about taking. But I'm also thinking of going to Hiroshima. Yeah, strangely enough, um, although there are many Shinkansen and bullet trains going to Hiroshima, there aren't that many flights going to Hiroshima. So that's kind of strange. And it's kind of expensive. Actually, well, flying domestic is expensive. Well, going anywhere domestically is quite expensive here. But um, I don't know. And then um, Kyushu is another place. And of course, uh, Nara and Kyoto. I kind of want to go back to Kyoto uh, during the autumn this year because, um, you know, this year there are no tourists. I kind of want to support the business and, um, you know, I have some favorites uh, that I go back all the time and, and I also want to um, see the autumn leaves 
and um, they say, you know, well, I'm expecting that there will be a lot less people this year, so I kind of want to experience that too. Okay, so I think it's time. So I'm sure it's been about three and a half minutes. <laughs> oh. Wow, look at that. Look at that. All right, so that's my little bean sprout thingy. Look at that, that fresh bean sprouts with carrots. And then you see the, the bits of a ground meat and a green onions. Okay, we're gonna give this a mix. Yeah, J just, just to break apart the noodles like this. Oh, this looks good. Look at that. And then when I add in the soup, definitely a miso. This is definitely miso uh, flavor. And then we have this um, second packet, the dry packet that we put on top. Interesting. I can't wait to try this one. This is so intriguing to me. Like why do they have two different um, packets of soup? Very interesting. Then we'll give this a mix. Oisodane. Okay, check out the noodles. Look how legit that looks. Wow. Okay, first things first, always go for the soup. Well, I, I, I do. Itadakimashou. Mmm. Mm hmm. That's actually pretty good. It's a very, very nice. Kind of on the sweet side miso um, soup stock. It's um, it's a little bit similar to sumire miso ramen, which is my favorite. But um, I think this is a little sweeter, and it's also not as rich as sumire. So that might be good or bad in your book. It really, really depends. Like sumire is um a little saltier for sure. But this is a this is a very well rounded uh, miso flavor. I like it. Deva, let's try the noodles. Oh. Mmm. <laughs> mm hmm. The texture of these noodles are better than the first one. Make, is there's a big difference maybe because this one hasn't been fried this one is more like the fresh type of noodles it's not really fresh but it hasn't been fried so it, it has more of that um, that uh, fresh noodle taste and texture whoops oh. okay the reason why my noodles are clumping up is because I never um, cook my noodles for the allotted time so, you know, some noodles have clumped up together. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious. Delicious. Although, I must say that I do prefer Sumire's uh, miso ramen. So far, nothing beats um, Sumire as far as uh, miso ramen is concerned for me. Mmm. Those fresh bean sprouts are really nice. Hmm. Can you hear it? That's the bean sprouts. It's crispy. Hmm. And the pieces of ground pork. Hmm. These are nice flavors as well. But I think what what's what most stands out for me in this particular one, ramen, it, are the noodles. The noodles are delicious. Hmm. Love this. Mm. Okay. I'm going to try to eat as much of this as I can. <laughs> mm.
Let's put this to the side. Here's the last one. This is one I, I, I've kind of been looking forward to trying. I've seen this every time uh, I go to Lawson, I, I see this. And um, it looks intriguing to me because, um, first of all, I know about Nakumuraya curry. I, I have tried their curry before. Um, I especially like their uh, curry bread, karepan. They have like, for me, I think it's the best karepan in uh, Tokyo. Um, yeah, their, their curry, I, I've tried it a couple of times. I don't love it, but many people do. And then Meiya Musashi is a famous uh, ramen place that I actually have never been to. <laughs> so anyway, let's open it. Mm, this is the kayaku and the soup. Okay, and what's this? Spice. And there's liquid soup as well. Okay, so this one has the liquid soup as well as the powder soup in this one. So I guess you would put in this whole package since this is the kayaku, the ingredient. So you need to put this in. But this also includes some soup as well. Oh. Okay, this one looks good. And then we're gonna put in hot water, boiling water. Put the, uh, the soup on top. And this one says we wait for four minutes, which means two and a half minutes in my book. You know, the main reason why, I, I, I think there are two reasons why um, I cook my noodles for a shorter time. Number one, I find that the the soup becomes too diluted for me when, when I um, add the water way up to the top. Number two, I'm a slow eater. Like today, I'm trying to eat as fast as I possibly can so this uh, video doesn't turn out to be like a 10 hour long video. But um, yeah, I, I usually eat very slow. And because I eat slow, even at the ramen restaurant, um, uh, once I get like halfway done, like my noodles start to get soft. So if it starts out harder, it's better for me because um, um, I can enjoy my noodles uh, better that way. E even halfway through, my noodles will probably be perfect by then. Um, so that, that's, that's actually the main reason why I, I, like, to, I like my noodles to be on the, the firmer side. Yeah, there's nothing worse, I think, than soggy noodles like that's that would disappoint me so much unless that's the way you're supposed to eat it i really um enjoy learning as much about food as i possibly can um for example you know we eat uh, japanese curry here in japan and, and you know of course we all know that it is not indian curry it's not supposed to be indian curry it's a uh, japanese curry I believe Japanese curry was um, brought here by um, the English. Um, either that or a Japanese chef uh, learned from an English person or something like that, but it's based on the English style of curry. Um, but um, I, I do like to know what uh, authentic Indian curry is supposed to taste like. I like to know what an English style curry is supposed to taste, taste like. Um, and come to think of, come to think of it, I've actually never had um, English style curry. Hmm. Hmm. I should Google it and try to make it at home one day. Kind of um, intrigued now. Okay. Anyway, all right. Definitely done in my book. Okay. Let's open it up. Oh, there's some explanation of both shops. On the back of the cover all right let's give this a mix look at the color it's beautiful and these noodles once again are yellow yep there we go and then we're gonna put in the uh, the liquid soup wow oh did you see that it is red what is this i wonder is this supposed to be spicy it doesn't say. I don't think it says on the on the cover. Oh, okay. I'm gonna give this a good mix. I don't want like a glob of spiciness in my mouth all at once. 
Okay, first things first, we're gonna take a sip of the soup. Hmm, wait a minute. Mm. Oh, I forgot to put the spice. There's another pack of spice here. It's good. Oh my gosh. Wait, I almost forgot about the spice. Because it's already good even without the spice. But let's see what this tastes like without the spice. And there's definitely a kick to it. Oh! <laughs> oh! Woo! That added... Oh! That added some heat to it. The last thing that I added was um, the hua zhang, the, uh, the mala spices, you know, that numbing spice. Wow. It's interesting because you get that mala numbingness plus you get the taste of curry. Oh, sorry. I did not expect it to be spicy. It, it's really not that bad, guys. It's not that spicy. Mmm, this one is a pleasant surprise. Oh, wow. <coughs> Sorry, some water. See, my body was not prepared to take spicy food. Once again, it's really not that spicy. But for some reason, I'm already sweating. So this one, um, there, there are pieces of corn no no what is this onion pieces of onion and meat and just a lot of spices in this one and i like that the soup is uh thick it really feels like um a perfect blend of like Japanese curry from Nakamuraya. It, it is a little different from um, Japanese curry. Um, it's based on the Indian curry recipe. So it does have the spices in there and, and the uh, mala spices, the Chinese mala spices, the numbing spice, which I, I'm actually kind of addicted to these days. It's a different type of spiciness, you know, from the chili spice. Hmm. Hmm. That is quite surprising. It's surprising, but it's a pleasant surprise. You know what I got to do right now, guys? I have to go back to the other ramen broths and the noodles because I completely forgot about those two. This one was like so intense, I completely forgot. Let's go back to the salt one, the most subtle one. I want to see what it tastes like now. Mmm. It's funny because um, that one actually tastes saltier than when I first began. Isn't that strange? Let's try the noodles. It, it tastes saltier. And now when you compare it, the noodles are really white, you know, compared to the other two. Like, wow, I've never seen like ramen noodles this white before. It's all, it almost looks like rice noodles. Hmm. Yeah. I can really taste the salt now. Very interesting. All right. I think I think I need some water in between the bites. Okay. The miso one. Hmm. Now the miso one tastes mild. I mean, it's it's a pretty mild miso flavor, but. It's, it's it's mellow. I guess mellow is the right word, you know, because there's no um, spice, um, there's no kick to it, which is it's actually quite nice. Mm. And there's that like umami punch in your face from the miso and the noodles. Mm. The noodles are really good. I just remembered now the noodles is a star of the show for the, the second one or the last one. Oh yeah, 
That was strong. <laughs> yeah, but it's good. If you're looking for something, you know, to like give you energy, like, you know, to snap you out of boredom, like this is the one to go for. Mm. Oh yeah, that was pretty intense. Okay. Hmm. As usual, there's no way I can finish all of this. I could, but then I'd probably have to take like a three hour nap or something. So I'm not going to do that, <clears throat> but it's okay. <laughs> Satoshi will finish this for me. He will, not even joking. It's really hard to say which one's my favorite because they are so different, which I purposely did today just for the sake of variety. But I gotta say, um, my favorite one that I would recommend you guys to try it if you don't mind spicy food is the last one. That um, combination one with Nakamuraya and Menya Musashi is quite interesting. It's called Makale Men. I see Mala Curry Noodles. It's quite unique, I think. It's a unique experience if you're looking for something different but tasty. This is the one I recommend. Sorry, burping. If you've never tried miso ramen before, this is a great one to start off with. Um, I think uh, this particular miso ramen is a lot better than your typical old-fashioned um, ramen shop miso ramen, which is you know just like miso plopped into ramen. That's what it tastes like to me. This one is a lot more complex. There's a sweetness to it, and it's really, really lovely. And if you want something simple and maybe you don't have an appetite, you want something lighter, then go for the shio ramen. That's my recommendation. But for today, um, the one that um, kind of um, interested me the most, uh, wild me the most, would be the mala curry men. Really, really interesting and pretty tasty, I gotta say. All right, guys. So <clears throat> once again, um, thank you. Thank you so much to Chicken Fruit. Um, I gotta say, I love this shirt. I keep saying it, but... The shorts are super comfortable and um, I can't wait to see what else uh, they come up with in terms of designs. Um, I'm so happy they did ramen. I, I think this is, has to be one of my favorite shirts. My, my other favorite shirt is their taiyaki shirt. I love that design. Um, I can't wait for them to come up with more um, uh, perhaps Japanese food. I think that would be great, you know? Um, but anyway. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, as always, please let me know what your thoughts are on ramen. Do you guys like ramen? I know many of you guys prefer soba. I know some of you guys are huge fans of udon. And I, I know many of you guys also don't like ramen either. But remember that I didn't really like ramen either before I met Satoshi. And then I started to fall in love with ramen because I learned about the different varieties of ramen. And I started to become interested in the, the very, very complex world of ramen. Yeah, it's, it's quite fascinating if you're into food. Um, but anyway, um, um, yeah, if you're in Japan, give these ramen a try and let me know what you think of these and which ones were your favorite. Oh my gosh, I'm sweating. I'm sweating so much right now. Whew. All right, guys, I will see you on the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.